What's up guys, it's Landon McCarter with Secure Agent Marketing. A question that I get asked all the time is that a frustrated insurance professional comes to me and says, I don't even know if my insurance website is working. How do I even know if it's working? Do I, you know, I'm, I'm not getting you know, tons of leads from it, but I don't really know how to gauge. And that's what, um, what I wanna do for the next several minutes is kind of break down and really answer the question, how do you know if your insurance website is working? First off, I wanna define what is working? Well, working would be, is it providing you a passive lead flow? Are you getting people that are reaching out to you through your website? Are you providing your prospects with enough information and credibility to educate them, to trust you enough to pick up the phone and call you and let them uh, quote you to potentially become one of your policyholders, right? That is the goal of a website. What we're trying to do with a website is educate, you know, pay for people to come to our website or whatever we need to do to get them there and educate those prospects once they get there and then use that information to convert them into a prospect to try and get a meeting for us to sell to get a policy. It's that simple, okay? So what I wanna do is just walk you through um, you know, how, to, how to know if it's working or not, okay? You'd be surprised how many people don't know what to do. They're just flustered. They built a website. They thought it was Field of Dreams. They thought if I build it, they will come and all of a sudden no one comes out of the cornrows, right? So here's what I wanna do. I wanna educate you on this. So the first thing you gotta do is you gotta make sure that you have Google Analytics on your website. Um, Google Analytics is the industry standard. There's other analytics tools, but I would just recommend Google Analytics. When you build a website, it doesn't automatically come with Google Analytics. You've gotta actually put the Google Analytics onto your website and, and you know, make sure it's the, uh, set up the correct way. It's not super easy, but it's also not rocket science. If you don't have analytics on your website and your web developer didn't help put it on there um, and you need help, we can help you with that. But it doesn't matter who helps you with the analytics or you do it yourself or watch a tutorial, I don't really care. Just get analytics on your website, that's the key, okay? So once you have Google Analytics installed, there's a couple, um, you know, analytics can be overwhelming sometimes, especially if you don't know like what you're looking at. There's so many different views, there's so much data. What do I know is good? You know, even if I'm looking at the data, what's industry standard? Without doing 10 hours of education on Google Analytics, I wanna try and teach you guys some basics of some screens that I go to um, every single time I'm looking at a website with one of my clients for us to kind of check the vitals. So what I try to do is I try to kind of give a visual of when you go into a doctor's appointment and you don't know what's wrong with you, you're just saying, doctor, I'm sick, I don't know what to do, right? Well, the doctor does certain things. He gets his stethoscope out, he checks your ears, whatever he does. You know, he's gonna do the same thing over and over to start diagnosing the issues. So what I wanna walk you through is the quick screens that I feel like give us the best picture at a quick glance of if our website is or isn't working, right? So the first thing that we do is we go to the audience overview page, okay? The audience overview page is a general view of all the people that have been to your website. In the top right of analytics, you can look at a date range. So you pick the date range that you wanna work at, work and look under. You can also compare and contrast different periods of time. You can compare quarter on quarter, year over year, month on month. The best thing that I like to do is compare year over year just because it gives you apples to apples comparisons, right? So the first thing that I look at on the audience overview page is that top left number of users and sessions, okay? So 566 um, you know, users and 543 sessions, I'm sorry, 703 sessions, um, and then 543 of those 566 are brand new users. That means these are people finding uh, my client's website on Google or using paid or whatever they're doing. It's not just repeat people coming to their website over and over, right? So I try to pay attention to those over that top line number. That number is kind of like the biggest number that we're gonna look at, and I try to look at that as uh, the first number that I compare month over month, week over week, whatever, and I, I start to see big gains on that number, I'll go try and figure out why, or big losses, I'll go try and figure out why as well. N uh, number of page of um, sessions per user isn't super important. Page views isn't super important because that's really just a multiplication number of the users and sessions. Along with pages per session, I would consider that a decently important number. Uh, if you can get your pages per session over two, that's the gold standard. You wanna be more than that if you can, but two is, two is fine. I wouldn't say it's a gold standard, but the bar that you wanna to set to try and get over is about two pages per session. Um, the average session duration, this gives you a summary of how long individuals are staying on your website. Anything over a minute 30 to two minute 30 is kind of the range that you wanna see on average. It also depends on traffic and if you have videos or, or whatever, but um, 
In general, I try to see over two minutes. Now, the bounce rate is probably the most important thing on this page, aside from the users and sessions. This tells us how many people went to our website and then bounced away without engaging into our further content, finding a video or a testimonial and reaching out to us. They just came to our website, didn't like what they saw and bounced. An acceptable bounce rate is anywhere from 40 to 60%. So you're talk, whenever you say percent, what I mean is, is if you have a 40% bounce rate, that means four out of 10 people went to my website and bounced out without further engaging. The lower the bounce rate, the better, right? That's important, okay? You can manipulate and control that bounce rate by having better website pages, more interactive content, better content, um, et cetera. Each of your different website pages will have different bounce rates, which gives you a good understanding of you know, what page is being more uh, engaged with over others. Right? The next screen that I go to really quickly is just a geography you know, footprint of where my traffic's coming from. Typically, it's a, uh, a good view, but it kind of gives us an understanding of where our traffic's coming from. Obviously, the bigger, darker circles are the, 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 the center of our um, overall traffic, and then the lighter, smaller circles are, are the smaller chunks of traffic. I like looking at that as well. Most clients do as well. The next page that I think is probably one of the most important pages that tells us the most is the acquisition overview page. Okay, so if you can find that, you go find the date range you wanna look at, and there's got a couple of different things that I wanna walk through, okay? What this does is this tells us the overall um, sources of traffic that equaled our total traffic for the month, okay? So what the total traffic number is is saying all of your website traffic came from all of your sources equaled this number. What acquisition overview tells us is, okay, you may have had 600 people to your website this month, but here's the five channels that they came from and here's how they interacted independent from one another. So this audience overview page gives us a really good understanding of where this traffic's coming from, all right? So obviously you have social, organic search, direct, paid search, um, referral. So organic search obviously is just someone going to Google and going to your website. Uh, social would be social media, them going from paid social to your website. Um, other, I'm sorry, direct would be someone goes into the, the search bar um, of the, like the URL and types in your exact URL and goes straight to your website without a search engine, that's direct. That number is usually uh, manipulated by the uh, like branding that you have or maybe you, know, you did a, an event where you uh, called out your URL and people went to it or maybe you got a TV commercial running or, or radio commercial com running and they have um, your URL on that um, page. So that's how that works on the acquisition column. The next column is the behavior column. That column is a really awesome uh, bit of information that tells us the bounce rate of the individual traffic. So there's different traffic sources have different bounce rates. You always want to expect your paid traffic to have a higher bounce rate than your organic traffic um, in general. That's usually an expectation that needs to be set. Now on the far right column, you have conversions. Now, this is where it gets a little more advanced. Um, you probably aren't gonna be able to figure out how to do your own conversion setup, but what this does is there's different ways to set up your conversion tracking within Google Analytics so that when, when your website users take a specific action, that counts as a conversion. What I mean by that is, um, you know, that would be like a lead or a phone call or a download a piece of gated content or whatever that looks like. Most people, honestly, don't have conversions set up unless they're working with digital marketing professionals. But this is one of the main ways that you can tell if my website is working, if I'm getting conversions. Let me explain what I mean with the next screen. So this next screen is showing us our actual conversions for this particular client. If you'll notice on May 31st, I think we just started tracking conversion as of May. Obviously, before that, the client didn't have their conversion tracking set up. So in this particular case, in the last 30 days, they've had 30 goal completions um, go through. These are conversions. These are um, individuals that did what we wanted them to do on our website. That leads us to a goal conversion rate. A 4.5% goal conversion rate is just fine. It depends on the traffic. It depends on how many goals we have set up. Anywhere from 4 to 15% is typically the range that I see on a conversion rate. Um, if you're below that, um, you need to kind of do some work to, to manipulate those numbers because you don't have enough goal conversion points for them to convert on or you're not educating enough to actually get them to the point of conversion, right? So you can also break down of the 30 goal completions, I can label and set up what goal completions they are because not all goal completions are created equal. So if we have a gated content guide that says your top 10 reasons to 
um, you know, apply for Medicare this year because here's the things that are changing or whatever. I just pulled that out of the air. But some type of piece of content where someone has to give you their information to get their information, um, to get the piece of gated information, then that would be considered a lead. But that's not as hot as a lead as someone that contacts you through their website or your website that says, I want to talk more about your Medicare plan, right? Obviously, one is hot versus others not as hot, but there's still goal completions. We want to track them individually, right? The last view is just, you know, one of the, I just wanted to show you kind of how you're able to work with the client, work with the company um, as a professional to help manipulate and get their, their website traffic, you know, raised and more increasing um, from a top line level and also increasing from a conversion perspective as well. So before I started working with this client, they had no idea if their website was working or not. They, they didn't even know. They just knew they had a website and they had some stuff going on it. They just didn't know really what they were doing. They, they would make changes. They didn't know if it was working or not, right? So what we did is I, tra I tracked analytics and what we're doing on this screen is we're looking at the year over year comparisons of, of, tra of uh, website traffic. So this particular client is doing Google AdWords along with some social and then also search engine optimization. So year over year, they're up 100%. Um, their goal completions, we don't know exactly how much they're up because they didn't have goal completions installed before I started to work with them. But over time, we'll start to be able to develop that benchmark of, of success. So this may have been a little advanced for some, um, maybe, not, maybe not advanced enough for others. That's the beauty about digital marketing is that it's an ocean and there's always a next level to get to. So at Secure Agent Marketing, we exist to help the insurance industry understand this stuff, consult and coach along the way to make sure that you can answer the question, how is my website working? Contact us through our website and we would love to take a specific consultative approach to your specific need and talk about what your potential goals should be and help you set them up and start tracking and start getting to that return on investment with the website dollars.